You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. I remember one car loaded them in, in a BMW was there and um, my mate who got who got uh, killed, Pud, his name was. He was a he was a he was a good good geezer. He was proper like proper fella, do you know what I mean? Game gamers, you're like probably one of the gamest geezers that I've I've ever come across, you know what I mean? I've come across some game bods. He uh, he had a big samurai sword and he just kept plunging the geezer through the window, but like repeatedly, like must have seen his arm come back about a good fifty to sixty odd times. And like I was thinking, fuck you know, we're gonna get done on a we're gonna get done on a murder charge. They've come into us, I've put this bottle straight through this geezer's nut straight away. I thought, right, I'm gonna hurt one of these badly first and set the tone, do you know what I mean, for the day. So I put this bottle through this geezer's face, but like right straight through his like hard and it's all the glass was shattered into my hand, cut all my hand up, but his face is gone, he's gone, ah, like that's fucking screaming. He's run back into the into the melee. Then my mate Darius ironed one of them out next to me. So I thought, well, we're doing all right. Like, yeah, here we go. I mean, this is it. Like, it's, 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 it's unfolding to plan. But they've got about 40 geezers in there. They're a good firm. Boom, we're on. Today's guest, we've got Dante Hopkins. How are you, brother? Yeah, mate, I'm good, mate. How are you? You are? Yeah, really good, mate. Really good. Yeah. Seen a few of your documentaries. Yeah. Bit of a boy. Yeah. Football hooligan to now professional MMA fighter. So yep. we can see that you love fighting. Yep. How have you been? I'm all right, mate. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, just trying to trying to get ready for my next fight. Um, just started literally training uh, one-to-one sessions, doing Muay Thai, but I'm all good at the moment. Everything's going well. Enjoying you know, that? Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Seen your documentaries. Yeah. Football hooligan, violence, yeah. prison. Yeah. But you've done a massive transformation. And also I met your mum earlier, an amazing woman, which yeah. we'll touch on the things that she does. Yeah. To give back to the community. I love that stuff. Yeah. But I always go back to the start of my guest brother. Where yeah. you grew up and how it all began. Yeah, so I grew up in a, I grew up in Lambert Grove, um, West London. Um, like where they have nothing all carnival. And um yeah, and I just grew up um my mum's obviously you met her earlier, she's um she comes from a Jamaican heritage. And um, my old man, he was a he was a famous rock star, so um, obviously they, they they met with each other. And back 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 then, I don't think um, obviously my dad was was English, he was white, and my mum's black. And I don't think that back then that many people had seen a white fella with a with a black bird, especially around there. And uh, my mum used to was a, used to be a model as well, so um, I don't think people were too happy about it. She said she got a bit of stick for it and stuff. And um, obviously, yeah, it was just, uh, growing up around here. Um, it was, it was quite a lot of uh, Jamaican heritage around here. This is where the first first area where people come when the wind rush happened. Jamaicans come and landed in England was uh, was around Nottingham Gate, Labrick Grove. It's where the first like race riots happened, and um, all Saint, there was a road called All Saints Road where there's a a, a program about it now on BBC, um, where that's where that's that was like the front line where all the first Jamaicans sort of um, used to get together and have their restaurants and yes, yeah, so uh, my, my my granddad her father was a was a black was a Black Panther. And they used, to, they used to have a base on All Saints Road back then, one of the yeah. original. So your dad, he was a professional. He was. A he, he, he was in a band with a it called Biggie Doe Dynamite too. Yeah. Um, and they was an off branch from the Clash. So Mick Jones from the Clash was the lead singer, and uh, they got like number ones all over the world. That's class, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was yeah. yeah. How was your schooling? My schooling, that was a bit turbulent to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Um, I went to a, I went to a, 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 when I, a, a secondary school. I went to a secondary school called um, Cardinal Vaughan, and it was quite difficult to get into. Um, you had to sort of pass a few tests and and whatnot. You like, and um, it was it was like a pro- proper high high level of education there. And um, yeah, I went there, but um, I was doing a little bit of. I was, obviously, the area that I come from is a lot of uh, like drug activity, gang activity, and I started. Uh, I was grafting a little bit of a. Uh, I was grafting a bit of cannabis back then. And um, and then uh, I, I can't remember exactly what happened, but I was doing a little bit in school as well because obviously all the posh kids they was loving, loving a bit of sm- uh, smoking a bit of a uh, bit of weed and that after school and whatever. So I saw there was a market to make a bit of dough at school, and uh, one day I've uh, gone there, gone into school. I had a, a conduct card for my report because I was behaving badly, so I'd have to used to have to take my report card to the ed- ed- year, at the end of, at the end of the day, or the start of the day and at the end of the day every day. And uh, flipping, I had one of the bags of weed was in the conduct card. I've handed it over to the to the head of year, and he's opened up the the, the the conduct card, and there's a bag of weed in there. So they expelled me for that. 
Yeah, so obviously and I ended up in an exclusion centre, and that was just like that was just like the it was like the wild west. You went went in there, <laughs> and, yeah. and going from there, like in Carnival, they used to walk around with like sticks and capes, like proper old school. You know, like they looked like they wanted to whip you, mm -hmm. like for, and it was proper 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 like old school like like, like Victorian age type setup. And then, then going to there, it was like kids, I walked in there, kids were jumping on the tables, fucking telling the teachers to fuck off and all sorts of, I was like, what is going on here? Do you know what I mean? But then quickly, like, you see, we're, we're, we're animals, ain't we? Do you know what I mean? And you adapt into your environment. About three weeks later, I was doing exactly the same thing. Do you know what I mean? It's sort yeah. of... So it was all the bad boys getting expelled yeah. all under the same roof? Yeah, yeah, basically. How did your mum see it when you get expelled? She weren't happy because obviously she grafted hard to get me into the school. Oh, she was going like, because it was a church, church school. She was at the church all the time doing bits and pieces. She wasn't happy at all, but she was proper upset. But then obviously, um, it is what it is, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? She obviously stuck by me through it all. And then um, I went, and she, I went, when I went to that centre, um, they got me into another school in uh, South London. And it was called, uh, I think, Salesian College. It was in Battersea. And... Um, Back then, like, I don't know if it's still the same now, but back then there was a massive thing, like postcode areas from London. If you're from West or South, so let's get some more. Um, if you're from West or South and um, gone to this, gone to that school and um, from the start, it was just like, oh, West, West boy. Like I was just literally, they just kept calling me West boy. I didn't, I don't even had a name. It was just West boy, West boy. And um, it was just constant confrontation down there. Like I was, I went in there year 10 as well, which is like, obviously you're going into a school in South London at year 10. Like it's not not probably not the best time to start if you're going to start in a school in a different manner, and um, and then I can't remember something happened anyway. Um, I think they, they 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 said that someone from West London had stole someone's phone one day, and that they were searching everyone in the school from West London for this phone. And I said, I'm not searching me, fucking. And uh, they said they've a little party of buds had come up to me, and an argument ensued. I said, you ain't searching me. I don't care. And the fucking school kicked off. And um, people were outside the school waiting, if I can remember rightly, and whatever. And um, the, the school got wind of it. And um, they was like, call, call my mum in for a meeting. So we're coming for a meeting. And these times, I remember my mum was a, used to be an ex-model. So she was, she, was, she was looking well when we was going to the school. And we're walking down the road to the school. And like, some year 11s, year above, I started wolf on my mum. I backed out a police baton and uh, gone after him through the school. And that, yeah, that was the end of that school as well. <laughs> <laughs> so a bit of a loose cannon then, then violent from yeah. a young age. Yeah. Where yeah. did that come from? How was your father? Was he angry, like, violent? Nah, my, my old man weren't really violent. He was just, he was a, obviously he was a rock star. His brother was, a, was, a, was an old football leader at Tottenham from like in the 80s and stuff. And, um, but he weren't really violent as such, but I suppose it's just growing up, growing up round, round, round Labrick Grove, it's just, it's like sink or swim, innit? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because like, you're a big fucking boy, though. What height yeah. are you? Six four? Six three. Yeah. What, what, how was your height and weight then? Young? Were you still yeah, a big still lump? Yeah, I was still a big lump, but obviously that, that brings on fucking ag, I think. It brings on more ag. People try to test you. Yeah, like obviously as well, like I've got, I've got, I've got a little bit of a baby face on me, so people like, and then that, that people will try and test you because you're a big lump or whatever. When you go out, someone will stick it on you because you're a big lump. And that, that's sort of how you have to make your bones, you know what I mean? You have to learn. Uh, it's like like I said, sink or swim. You have to learn how to defend yourself. Otherwise, you're just gonna get fucking walked over. Do you know what I mean? Did you like fighting back then? Um, or was it just like you no, say, sink or swim? I'll tell you what. Like I, I, I tell you what. The, the first time, the first time I started proper getting into ag was a, was one at a pal of mine for um, good mate. I considered him a good mate of mine at the time. Um, he uh, he he had he had an issue because some girl said that I said something about him, which I hadn't. And he said, oh, I wanted to have a straightener, and I was like, I don't want to fight you, my pal. They were talking, I said, look, you're my mate, I don't want to fight, I've considered him a good pal of mine. Come outside the block and he's, he's, he's sort of gone, he's, he's started steaming into me and I've sort of like covered up and then ended up getting half weighed in by the fella and um, come home and like my mum and my sister were like, listen, you ain't nobody's, you ain't nobody's cunt, like, are you letting someone fucking weigh you in like this? And I was, I was just saying, look, it's my pal, I didn't want to eat him, da -da -da -da. and then like about two weeks later, I come out, had, uh, had a straightener with him, done him, chased him up the road and I was like yeah do you know what I fucking I enjoyed that do you know what I mean I liked that that was that I, I, I turned the table on it and I felt powerful and I was like do you know what that's that like and then I realised that violence was probably the best form of defence you know what I mean especially when you're growing up in a manner like you like you in any sort of world like I think like there's always people that are going to arise come up if, 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 if you're if you're my size or whatever a big lump or whatever there's always altercations that are going to recur and I found that through 
doing things, you made yourself more safe because you made less altercations, uh, altercations happen because people would think twice about it if you'd done something nutty six months before, a few months before, do you know what I mean? Yeah, because you've lost friends as well to murder young, have you yeah, not? Yeah, yeah. How old were you? Uh, 16 at the time. And my pal was um, 17. Uh, yeah, that was... Um, that was a over, over a problem at a radio station around here, Lubbock Grove. Um, uh, a rival, a like different area. They weren't even really a rivalry, I wouldn't say. We didn't really have, have that much of an altercation with them, but a few weeks before there'd been a problem at the radio station over two mobs, my pals and this little firm uh, clashing over it, like MCing or at, at, a, at a radio station called, a radio station called Lalo. And uh, basically they, um, <coughs> they, uh, they come down and uh, the argument ensued, and uh, I think verbals happened, but no, 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 no fist or anything were, were thrown. And where a few weeks later, they've come back down to the manor because every week, uh, 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 each crew would have a different set set time that they'd go there. So they'd come every Wednesday or whatever. So they've come back down the following week, but this time they've come tooled up to the nines, uh, like with machetes and whatever. No, um, no, no shooters, just just like knives or whatever. And um, and they've basically going off. Uh, they were just saying things like, oh, suck your mum, this and that. But like, where we come from, saying suck your mum's probably the worst thing that you can, might sound a bit trivial to some people, but it's, a, it's the worst thing you could probably say to someone round here, do you know what I mean? And uh, basically, so we got wind of it. I was actually listening to the radio at the time and I rang up my pals. I said, you, you, you heard this like, on, on, on Lalo? And everyone's like, what? I said, everyone's switched on. I got wind of it and um, he said, oh, let, let's, let's meet up. So we met up in an estate called um, Edward Woods, which is um, up to, just up the road from, from, where, from where my mum's house was. And uh, got there and sort of everyone was all mobbed up, but uh, we were all tore up to the, to the knives. Uh, and uh, like samurai swords, uh, big knives, uh, machetes, whatever. I can't remember exact tools, but it was, there was an arsenal of weapons. And um, <clears throat> we'd gone down to, to Lalo where they was, and I remember the, the, the gate was locked. And uh, the other mob were on the other side of the uh, other side of this gate, and uh, yeah, that, that, we just, everyone started trying to climb the climb the climb the gate to get over the gate, and it was, it was and then I remember the gate just opened. I can't remember why it opened, but it did. Someone opened it from the other side, and uh, gone in there, and uh, loads of them were flapped it straight away. They started jumping on onto the the west way, which was above it, the flyover, and uh, onto like the traveller side that was next to it, and uh, and a few of them have stood, and they like they've got done. One of them, one, uh, one car, I remember one car load of them in, in a BMW was there, and um, my mate who got who got uh, killed, Pud, his name was, he was a he was a he was a good good geezer, he was proper like proper fella, do you know what I mean? Game gamers, you're like probably one of the gamest geezers that I've I've ever come across, you know what I mean? I come across some game bods. He uh, he had a big samurai sword and he just kept plunging the geezer through the window, but like repeatedly, like must have seen his arm come back about a good fifty to sixty odd times. And like, I was thinking, fuck, you know, we're gonna get done on a, we're gonna get done on a murder charge, yeah. And uh, he just kept fucking, but he was like, he weren't like properly sticking it in him. He was just like preps in his body, so it probably was going in about, like just yeah, break, him. nipping him, yeah. But like constantly, but he just looked like he didn't look clever, do you know what I mean? And then the car got smashed up. Um, we tried to then block their car, block their car from getting out, so they couldn't escape. And uh, a few of the people in the car was getting done, the car got done. And uh, yeah, and that was the end of that. Like really, never really heard nothing more from it, but I know that they, uh, one or two of them were badly hurt. And uh, yeah, and then about a year, about a year or so later, there was a, uh, I think it was a New Year's party at a club called Egg Club in King's Cross. Um, Mateys come back, seen him, they've bumped into each other in the club, they've had words and uh, sort of like the geezers come, uh, chipped off and come back. And shot him five times in the, on the nightclub, killed him. Right. How did that affect you? Um, I don't know. I just I can't really remember properly, but it just it was just it just put. I just thought it was a bit like if you remember how it started, it was point like very pointless how it started. Do you know what I mean? It was just over. Through words. Yeah, but then as as you get older, more things happen. You realise that's probably how most violent incidences occur. Mostly over not much. Do you know His what I mean? have been dented. Yeah, just through words. And yeah, one one altercation has led to another. Yeah. where it's been pretend, it's been deaf. Yeah, and that can be difficult, especially if you're only seventeen years old. Yeah, because then if you're fighting for a young age as well, you're always thinking of consequences. Like, yeah. beef never really gets forgotten about, does it? It's never mm. people shake hands and that, but it's yeah. still in the back of your mind. Certain things can trigger certain yeah. things. Like even 
friends taking the piss yeah. out of you or he done you a few years ago yeah. and he thinks that fucking right and then before yeah. you know it you're retaliating years later that's what I mean this, this, this is what I mean this is like obviously you know you try and put a message across to, to youngsters and that but like I see it all the time you know like geezers coming through that think they're the hardest think they're the baddest and I just think to myself like all my pals that were the hardest and the baddest are either doing a murder charge or or their brown bread do you know what I mean mm. And like fuck, and that's that's the only way it goes. You can be tough, like do you know what I mean? So I'm not saying all tough guys end up dead or whatever, but it's it's more likely. Do you know what I mean? If you if you're if you're like a serious gunman or a serious knife man, a lot of these youngsters are looking up to these bods. They end up, you end up. That's that's the road that you end up going down. Do you know what I mean? Well, we end up saying. serious bird or, or whatever. Yeah. But and like a lot of these uh, rappers and stuff that are out there now, because everyone's a lot of the, everyone's listening to rap, rap, like rap music now. It's, it's blowing up like what it has in America. Probably in the 90s, it's done. The UK rap scene's massive now, and like everyone's listening to these rappers, but they ain't listening to when they're doing their bit of time down the block. They're not they're not talking about when they were sitting in the block and flipping screws are coming in with riot shields, beating the fuck out of them, or next door's trying to kill themselves, or or, or people are getting dragged dragged in rooms beaten fucking shit protests are happening do you know what I mean and like fucking they're at, you're at the end of, you're at the end of your tether down there and like you've it, like your big artists and men are breaking down there they're not they're not they're not uh, saying about that in their rap tunes yeah. so they're glamorising their lifestyle to kids but they're not really there's yeah, two sides to the other coin do you know what I mean do you know where I'm coming yeah, from yeah. and it like, can be difficult if you've got a reputation or if you've been a trigger <coughs> man or yeah. a, whatever you've done in the past yeah. And because you've got pure straight ego, you've got that reputation, you're a bad man. So yeah. you never want to have it dented. You've yeah. always got to step up to the plate. Yeah. So only way, there's always going to be somebody coming through the ranks, bigger yeah. or better, yeah. more nastier through yeah. the years. You would have seen it yourself, yeah. especially still being young, only 31. Yeah. Yeah. But you've been through the wars yeah. and you've tried to make a name for yourself at an early age, fighting yeah. the biggest. But again, once you got older as well, there's going to be somebody like yeah. you yeah. 10, 15 years yeah. ago who you probably think, little cunt, I'll yeah. show you. And yeah. before you know it, Again, you're in that body bag or you're doing a life sentence. Of course, you know what I mean? And that's the thing, like, you know what I mean? Even me, like, any, like, any anywhere now, sort of, you, you know, you've got a target on your head. If I go out to a club or whatever, you know what I mean? You know someone that's, like, so you've got to, you've got to remain, not not looking for it, but you've got to remain fit and strong and, and ready just in case that ever does arise, you know what I mean? And that's and that's that's, that's an issue that you've always got to deal with. Because even if you, you no one's, no one's going to think, oh, he's, He's thirty five now. He's got a couple of kids. He don't want. It. He don't want no egg. Mm -hmm. That don't work like that, does it? <laughs> no, don't work like that, does it? No, no, no. Like, people, people look for weakness. They yeah. wait for you to drop your guard. Yeah. You're constantly on alert. No yeah. matter where you go. No matter if you've changed your life and you're doing MMA and you've turned pro. Like, you're I, on alert. I feel like I don't know. I think it, I don't know if it sounds stupid to say, but like you know, like like they say, our soldiers have got like um, what's that? PD, is it PTSD? Or PTSD. Whatever. Yeah. But like when I go into a gaff. Like throughout, even from like through when I was younger, I'd go into a gaff and I wouldn't think, oh, like walk into a place. I walk into a place and think, right, he's gonna cause ag. Like I can tell he's gonna cause ag. Keep an eye on him. Keep an eye on him. Where's the nearest weapon that I can use if it does, if it does go off? I'm not think like that's the first thing that I'm thinking. I'm making a risk assessment of potential violence and what potential weapons can be used. I don't think that's normal. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. if it's normal to me, like. Because I'd think like that's the right. That's like I've I've ticked off the, the the safety risk assessment when I walked into it. That now I've learned as I've got older to only go to places where there's a completely chill vibe. The moment I feel like there's a bit, there's a vibe, a sense. Because like, you always get a sixth sense that it's gonna go off. Well, a little bit energy. A little yeah, a little bit of thing that like, yeah, I can feel there's a bad vibe tonight. And oh, is it you though you're talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? It could, it, it you just be. get that vibe that you're wanting something to be. pop off. It could be, but then but then I've noticed that if I feel that vibe now, I'll just slip. Yeah. Just uh, just to avoid it. Mm -hmm. What age did you start getting into football hooliganism stuff? The hooligan so, stuff. The football stuff. Um, football stuff. I must have been about. I, I was, I was the first incident was about fourteen. That's young. Yeah, but I didn't really, I weren't really proper in the mix. It was just sort of like me just running because Tottenham back in the day, Tottenham when when I was younger, Tottenham used to just go off like every big game it would go off on the height. There'd be hundreds of geezers out there just, pro and it was like compared to now, there's the chat the scene's changed a little bit. There's a lot of divs about now. You go there now, and there's a lot of a lot of wallies floating about. Back then it was just proper like men. Do you know what I mean? Like they used to all like naughty Mars bars across their face and. Everyone just, I don't, maybe, maybe it's like, because I was younger, but they, everyone just looked like they was bang up for it. Do you know what I mean? And um, nowadays, there's it's a lot of, the scenes change a little bit. There's still like hardcore elements within firms, but there's a lot of people that just go dressing all the gear 
but ain't no actually, idea. yeah, exactly. All the gear, no idea. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So what's changed? Do you think the lot? films could the films played a part in that though? Yeah, probably. Yeah, and then obviously the old bill as well. They, the old bill have, have got a thing against football fugs where they just they just go after them. It's an easy target, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like a lot of lads, they get pissed up. They throw a few punches on the camera, and the old bill of football, they just like for one punch, they're trying to give you two, three years. Like people have got mortgages and whatever, and then the proper people end up slipping off and thinking, swerve this, you know what I mean? Like Tottenham and West Ham had a round 2009 uh, at Mile End, and it's the, not even a punch was thrown. The old bill in between it, verbals and a few bottles thrown either way. Everyone that was there got birded. About 60 geezers must have got birded. Like, not even a, for not even a punch thrown. But that has a trickle down effect on, 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 a, on both firms, because you think, if they think, oh, we can get birded for that without throwing a punch, then, like, do you know what I mean? Flipping. Just association, though. Yeah, now people are like thinking, nah, fuck that. Like, people who would have gone normally are thinking, I've got a house, I've got kids, I, I, I can't risk it anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? When did you start moving through the ranks then for? <coughs> yeah, so, yeah, so about probably when I was about 19, 18, I was still, I was coming up, up, up through the ranks. I was doing, doing a few. A few things, had a few rounds, but I got banned pretty early. I got banned when I was like 17 for Tottenham Arsenal and Tottenham Cardiff at home. And uh, I got nicked and um, I actually got, um, I was in court on the day my daughter's daughter was born and I had to rush through the court case. I was in Hammersmith Youth Offending Court and I had to rush back to the, other, the hospital, which was on Duquesne Road in Shepherd's Bush to get there, to get there in time for my daughter's birth. But um, so I always remember my ban started on the day of my daughter's how long was the ban? It was a three-year ban. Do you think that was a sign from the gods? I don't know. It's Get your shit together. You've got a newborn here. Uh, mate, do you know what it was? I'll tell you what, like, you see the banning all this? I don't know. It's a bit of like of a... It was a bit like, oh, I'm banned. If anything, it gave you a bit extra of a stripe. T- yeah, it was a bit like, you know when they used to give kids asbos? Mm-hmm. And they'd be like, oh, he's got an asbo. Like, he's a, yeah, just, it was almost like it was like an identification thing. And it, yeah, it was like an extra extra strap. Can you still get into the games, though, when you were banned? No, nah, because they had, the, they had the, these football spotters and they just like they were just red hot, like they just knew, like from straight away they knew your address. They probably knew my shoe size, these, 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 like they, yeah. they, they was like, a couple of them, like one called Richardson, he was actually, he was actually a jock as well. <laughs> 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 he was one of your ones. Yeah, yeah I mate, mean, this geezer, uh, Creasy Richardson, mate, he had, I don't know, it's like, He's one of these coppers who I just used to think, didn't you? I don't think he, I think he used to go home and just ignore his missus and just sit there, <laughs> just watching, watching pictures of us because yeah. he knew everything. Like, and mm. he wouldn't let up. He'd like, we, we would have a row in like, we had a row with, with Portsmouth in um, in Waterloo Station, and it was their young lot, and we smashed the granny out of them. And they, they was, they, we, they was, um, well, I was, I was with uh, one of my, one of the main Tottenham old lot, geezer called Swaney, and we was walking into this, in, walking into this, into the station, and, um, uh, I remember, I remember walking to the we thought oh, we're going home, thought we're leaving to go home. And uh, the boys have ended up b- bucking up with uh, these Pompey lot outside. And Portsmouth were getting run into the stage, they was getting done into the station. Me and Swain were in the station, I'm like, what's all that commotion? And uh, they've come running to the station and uh, flipping, they, as they're run, getting run into the station, I can hear them going, Stan, Portsmouth, Stan, it's only Tottenham. And I've gone, only Tottenham? I said, we're fucking here, you can't bang. Uh, Going into him from behind him, and my mate Swain, he's gone stop, and uh, he's gone look. He goes look. There was smudges everywhere. He's in uh, Waterloo Station. There was cameras all over the gaff. Oh, Bill coming! I thought fate. He pulled me away. Thought fight anyway. All them not come in and absolutely iron them out. Just clean the floor of him. It was uh, the FA Cup semi final, and um, yeah. Anyway, slipped off. Thought you saucy cunts only took them. Yeah. <laughs> you look like happy, bro. When you speak about it, I oh, mate. Do you know what it is? Yeah, <laughs> do you know what it is. I tell you what, like. I got, I got, went away for it, but it was like at the same time it was going away for it was 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 bad was bad times. But then when I was doing when I was going active, it was some of the some of the funnest times. Like the buzz that I was used to get from it was just some. It was some of the best days, like some of the best days. And the comradeship, my mates and that, it was my, some of my best mates, the good, best people that I've met were, were down there. Proper good people, you know, like and coming from a, you know, like I used to I used to look at it like this. Coming from a manner that I come from. Like if I put 20 quid on the table, 20, 20 grand on the table and left the room and went out to the shops, there ain't many bods that I could really come back and say, oh, that 20 quid would still be there or they'd still be there. But at football, there was a lot of bods that I could name that I could leave that 20 quid on the table, go to the shops and come back and it'd still be there. And for me, that sense of loyalty and comradeship was was um, was was it meant a lot to me, do you know what I mean? Because in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a world that you come from where a lot of people are snaky, do you know like what I mean? Brotherhood. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Nah. How was it then? What was your first proper terror? What was the buzz like for you? Um, yeah, the buzz was on, like the first proper proper one. Were you scared? Uh, nah, because it was it was probably our, our, I weren't really scared. It was probably our, Arsenal. We, we played Arsenal in a in a, in, a, in a cup and they come in a boozer and um, and it's, we we scored. We had our back turn. We couldn't get into the ground. We tried to double up to get into the ground and we had our back turn to to watching the screen and they come. They've come through. And attacked us, attacked us from behind. A few people got decked, and I've seen one of them drop on the floor. And I've absolutely ironed him out with a, this this bar stool, and, and um, cut his whole head open. A cup, uh, one of his two of his mates tried to come drag him out, and I was doing them with the bar stool on their back. And uh, my, another geezer called pa, uh, my mate Palmer. He's a big, uh, big, big fellow with big hands, and that. He's, uh, he was just, he was just. He was just like a like a just ironing people out. He's, he's just like you know one of them geese is just he, he just decks people wherever he, wherever he lands on. He's decking them. Do you know what I mean? There's a few other bods in there that could have a row, and they've ended up coming unstuck. But there was only about a handful of us, like ten of us, and uh, they got done and that. But it was just there was no time to really be scared. It was like it was just so so fast, and it was like do you know we're, we're getting we're getting done here. Do you know what I mean? You have to quickly come in come into action. Like it wasn't really a thing where we there's other rows that I've come to where. You, you turn up and there's a mob in front of you and it's like you're walking into and that's the time where you have time to to think about being mm. scared and that do you know what I mean like I, I had a we had a row with um with, with Wolverhampton, Wolverhampton Wanderers and um I ended up coming becoming best mates with with their um with their main geezer after he's a lad called Denny and um me and him locked horns in that row and we had a little toe to toe we ended up becoming best mates off of it, which is fucking. So how does that work then? Like, <laughs> does that happen? Is that allowed? Yeah, like, do you know what it is? It's like, do you know, like, like that, this particular row that we had with them, with um, Luton, 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 Luton Town had a little firm, and their little young lot used to come to Spurs, and um, they we used to get on with them. That's because like, I don't know, there's a lot of Tottenham fans that come from like Bedfordshire and other little counties around London. So we used to have a friendship with them, and they, they used to come with us. We used to bring sort of like 10, 15 young lot to to our our, our games and that. And he used to have a, a lad called Bats that was running there, little young lot, and I used to be pals with him and whatnot. And um, anyway, they, they was playing Wolves, and um, I knew a few Wolves lads. And um, obviously, we got it all, we got it all organised. You know, it was all off the off the, off the grid from the old bill and that, far far away from the ground. Like, and um, and uh, Wolves were like, yeah, yeah, we're coming. Anyway, he's in this. We, uh, I brought about ten of my Tottenham young lot come up. So there's about ten of us. There's about 20, 25 Luton in this boozer. And about half the Luton lot said that the older Luton like lads who were like a bit, bit old, we was like younger, they was a bit old, like in their 29, 30. And they, they was like, oh, we've heard that they're, they're somewhere else. We're going. So I was like, nah, nah, nah. I said, look, they're, they're coming. I said, I know they're coming. They're, they're, they're coming. Do you know what I'm saying? They're like, nah, nah, nah. They're, they're, they're somewhere else. We're, we're off. So they've slipped. So I'm thinking, fuck, you know, like our numbers dwindled by about half. And like they, all their mob was coming, do you know what I mean? So I was thinking, like, what are we gonna do now? Do you know what I mean? So we thought, fuck it, we've got what we got here. There's about twenty of us there, or whatever, and um, we just got to run with it. And I remember, uh, so we're walking up. So we was in the town centre. We're walking up to a bruiser closer to where they've got to got to come to get get off the off the off the rattler. And uh, yeah, so we're walking up there, and uh, we all split up into fives. And then the next thing, I got a call from someone saying they've just come off the train. But we all split up into fives to get to this spot so we didn't attract attention from like cameras or whatever. Walking up the road. And like they come off the train, and so I'm like, yeah. And my mates who, who, who was on the phone said they, they were a fucking good mob. Like, there's a, like all their pods are here. So I was thinking, fuck, there's like four groups of five split up, and it's like, we don't even know where everyone is. Like, it's like, it's a shambles. And, uh, but it, it, was, it was like, uh, it just sort of come together just at the right time. So, like, they were not coming out of the station, walking up this road, and that like, we're now, we've now sort of like managed to get about 15, 16 of us together now. We're on like a, a road parallel to the road that they're on. And like, there's a little alleyway that can lead to where they are. So someone said, "Oh, they're through this alleyway." So we've gone through this alleyway, and I could tell everyone was getting a bit, a bit nervy. Do you know what I mean? And I'm going, "Fucking um, this lad that I was with, he had a bit of like a bit of wood that he picked up." I said, "Get out of me, fucking get it to me." He's like, "No, no, no, no." He wouldn't give it to me. I'm like having a toss with him. I was like, like, "I'm thinking, why are you gonna take that bit of wet back for? If anyone's gonna use it, it's gonna be me." I said, like, "Anyway, he, he didn't give it to me." So I've gone, I've gone, fuck it. So I said, everyone said, look, live. And I said, we can do these. I was going, we can do these. And it's like, you know, like everything about any type of violence is all psychological. I think mostly, like not all, but like 90% of it is psychological. Someone said that to me when I was younger and I think it's very true. And like, they were always coming out that alleyway 
And I was going, we can do these. I was like, we can fucking do these. I was like, we can do these. I, I felt I might have been half convincing myself. <laughs> I looked around, I looked around, I looked around and everyone was proper young. Yeah. I was thinking, we're going to get turned over here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fuck it, like, we can do it. So we're coming through this alleyway. And um, as we've come out of this alleyway, I've looked at the end of the road and they just filled the, they just filled, they just filled the road up at the end of the road. But they had, they had our backs turned to us. So they was walking, going the opposite way. And I've gone, hey, I said, we're here. And I I turned around, I said, liven yourselves up. I said, come on, get out of the fucking alleyway. So we're coming up, coming up the road now and they're all coming down the road. And um, I picked out one of, my, one of my little pals before. I picked out one of my little pals before. Picked out, I picked out one of my little pals before, his name's Dara. And I said, um, I said, today, I said, look, today you're, you're the man. I said, I knew he was a game little youngster. I said, just stick by me. I said, back me up. I said, trust me. I said, we're gonna, I said, you'll make yourself into a legend today. I said, stick by my side anyway. Come out the alleyway, he's by my side. Right there, I thought, yeah, that little speech, that little, mm. the little two little second prep talk, yeah. it, done, it done it nice. So he, we come up the road and straight away, they've come into us. I've put this bottle straight through this geezer's nut straight away. I thought, right, I'm gonna hurt one of these badly first and set the tone, do you know what I mean, for the day. So I put this bottle through this geezer's face, but like, right, straight through, but like hard. And it's all the glass was shattered into my hand, cut all my hand up, but his face is gone. He's gone, ah, like that's fucking screaming. He's run back into the, into the melee. Then my mate Darius ironed one of them out next to me. So I thought, well, we're, we're doing all right. Like, yeah, here we go. Do you know what I mean? This is it. Like, it's, 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 it's unfolding to plan. But they've got about 40 geezers in there. They're a good firm. And then like, what we're doing, like they're coming into us, we're doing them, we're doing them. Like as everyone's coming, there's six of us. Every time one of them come forward, six of us are just going bang, bang, bang. We're banging them back and they're running back into the crowd. Another one would come forward. But then in the end, it just started, it's about six, seven minutes in, they started to sort of come where they was, the tide was turning slightly. I thought, right, because we was bashing them for about six minutes. And um, and then like one of, the, one of their main lads, this Denny lad, I've turned and like, I'm on the one side of the road and I've looked and I can see like fucking our, our bods on that side are struggling against this one geezer. I thought, who's this cunt? And they're going, don't they? They're going, don't they? Help. So I'm going, I'm going, what? Just like, help. I've seen this geezer and he's, he's got this bat. And I just looked at him, I thought, I knew, I knew I should have had that bat. <laughs> like, from the start, I just knew you should have just given me that bat. I don't know how this wolves geezer's ended up with this bat. But he's moving to him with this bat. He's going, bang, bang, lacing them up and they're getting hurt like badly on that side. So I've come over there, me and him have squared up. He's fucking whacked me with a bat. I've whacked him back and we're growling and he's frothing each other and it's just gone off again. Bang, we've all gone into each other. And, um, and then like the old bull siren started coming. But they was edging it towards the end because like, I ain't going to come on anywhere and lie. You know what I mean? That, but for the first six minutes, we was doing them. So mm -hmm. like, call it what you want to call it. <laughs> I, 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 I want to call it a draw, but mm -hmm. fucking, I don't know. Like, anyway, at the, at the end, they fucking, one of them said, oh, look, the old billet come in. They're all like, shake hands. We've gone to turn and walk off now. And they've sort of done another attack from behind. And we've got a fucking bit done up the road a little bit, like three bricks behind the head and whatever. But... I thought that, I don't even think they can really claim that. I how does it end though? Is that how it ends? Or is it a case of either the police come and chase you or somebody takes a beating yeah. and then they turn away? This is the away. problem. This is the problem. You see like, if the old bill start coming, it's like you can turn to run because the old bill are coming and end up getting done. So it's like, I mean, if you stay too long, you end up getting nicked. So it's a catch 22. Do you know what I mean? But I'd rather get nicked than done, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> How long does a proper tear up last between well, two no, good funds? There's no, if there's no build, ten minutes, ten 15, minutes, yeah, yeah, ten minutes. That's a lot, though. It's a long time. Do you know what I mean? People, it's, it's thirty time. seconds, sixty seconds on a square time. going. They're blown yeah. out their ass. Never mind. Yeah. Ten minutes, constantly on guard. Have to yeah. look over your shoulder. Is it just yeah. a like a Royal Rumble free for all? Nah, do you know, like it can be, but then it's like you can have rounds where it's a bit set too. Like bang, a few bods come forward, a few bods. Do you know what I mean? Like for a lot of the rounds that I've been involved in, a few it's been a few bods come forward, three or four, or five, and you normally it's the same geezers at the front, isn't it? It's normally the same bods holding it what together. What happens if somebody's there with you and they turn away and run? Is that game yeah. out? Or? Yeah, they'll like, they'll be gone. Do you know what I mean? If you go, you want to go. You're going as a group, isn't it? Like you're going as a group. Like, I've seen. I've been there before. With I've seen people bolt, and like, do you know what I mean? It's just like because I, I look at it like I take it personal, isn't it? Personally, like because I'm looking at it like do you know like. I'm a mixed race lad in a, in a, in a quite, it's quite a lot of these firms are quite racist. Like, and to, to them, like, I might as well be, I might as well be as dark as Frank Bruno, even though I'm, my mum's, my dad's white and my dad, mum's black. They're, they're trying to work me, you know what I mean? And you're meant to be my pal and they want to turn me into a vegetable. So if we, if we don't stick together, like, and one of us gets done, it's because, it's because we ain't stuck together. So it's like, for me, I take it personal, do you know what I mean? Who's the baddest fucker you've ever came up against? What, first, a firm or? Firm, yeah. Oh, fucking the best fighter. I don't know the best fighter I had was with Wolves. That that particular yeah. round. 
that was the best fight. Um, probably the, some of the, I, I don't know, the firms that I rate, like I rate, I've seen Stoke, Stoke are good, but Middlesbrough are good. Um, West Ham's old a lot of good, they're young a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're young a lot, we've walked all over. We've, um, yeah, we've, we've terrorised their young Because I've had Big Baz Barrington on and he is a lump as well. Yeah. He yeah. is a machine. Do you know what, I've guy. never had it, do you know what, I've never had it with the Zulus, but I heard yeah. good things about He's him. a good guy, man. Mm. Love Big Baz and his Mrs. Tracy, two yeah. good people, yeah. but even yeah. when he speaks about yeah. it, there's yeah. like a twinkle in his eye. Yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. Do, yeah, you just must what, just love fucking violence. Do you know what it is? It's, 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 I'll tell you what, you see with football, yeah, it's, it's, it's more, it's a, it's not, I've been involved in a different, lot of different arenas of violence, you know what I mean? I've had m new, more pub fights than probably I've had flipping roast dinners, like, do you know what I mean? But they're not quite a lot of like uh, MMA fights or whatever, whatever, it doesn't compare to the same buzzers kind of football, like there's nothing, I, don't, I can't explain it. Even if I had a f 10 on 10 with my mates in a boozer on a Saturday night, it's the same sort of thing, but it ain't the same. How was know. it if people were getting plugged, if you were hitting people with bottles as well? Is there not rules, like no objects? Or is that a free for all? Do you know what it is? You know what it's like? Well, I just find it's just pub. Any tools that are, that are in a pub is fair game. Like, <laughs> like do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> cheers, cues, cheers. Cheers. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, come on, look at that when they go, like when they England play and that and they all throw in their cheers and that. I don't really rate that at all, but it's, it's, it, it's, what, they, it's what happens when they go abroad and that. Like, but that's, that, that's what they do and they throw all the cheers and that. Do you know what I mean? But, I just think sometimes I look at them in chair fights, I just think they just need to get into each other, do you know what I mean? How's how have you got an, how's Tottenham got an Aberdeen connection? So the Aberdeen connection comes from Aberdeen uh Aberdeen uh, work, Aberdeen lads were working in London and then back I don't know, back in the day, back in, in the old school days. And then yeah, they, they um they was working in London doing um building work. So they started coming and then Tottenham started going up there and and like it was like a link between the firms, and it's just they were like got multiple flags together. And then I got nicked for Aberdeen versus Brighton, so Aberdeen were playing Brighton in a, in a pre-season friendly, and like we organised going up there four different trains and that. And um, yeah, flipping gone up there about a hundred, about about a hundred, about eight, eighty to a hundred of us were up there. But um, we've we've all I've, I've, I've been, I was on the phone to him for 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 a, for a little while trying to get get it sorted with him. And I knew that Brighton had a little firm that were up for it because it's like, you know what it is? You see, like these little sea town, seaside towns, like your Pompeys, Port Portsmouths, your Southamptons, your your Brightons. You know what I mean? They 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 don't sound like the biggest hearts, but they will have it. Do you know what I mean? Like pop, like they 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 just game for it. You know, like they got all these little small towns around them, and a lot of these small towns, they like they like they they fight a lot on a, all they got to do on a Saturday. Especially like when you go, even not just Portsmouth town, even small towns like Burnley. Burnley, your Lincolns, you know these places like they're Port Vales and that. They're small towns, but all they got to do on a Saturday night is ever is ever real. They got nothing better to do. What are, what are they gonna do? Like, do you know what I mean? so so they come out and they have a, they, they 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 go out on a night out and they have a tough and they're all tough. They're all tough men. You know what I mean? They're not they're not dickheads. So you go to these places and you think, oh, you're playing some small little team, and it ends up fucking. They end up, you end up coming against twenty geezers who drink with each other week in week out, who will back each other till the end. Do you know what I mean? Whereas you, you might get you, know, you might get the city teams and they're from all over, so they don't really they will come yeah. from like you know like Tottenham Tottenham bods will come from up north from the Midlands from Kent from Enfield, do you know what I mean? All parts of England, so they're not really drinking with each other every week, so it's not as much of a bond. Do you know mm. what I'm saying? Was that the first time you got the deal? Uh, you got yeah, a that, sentence for that, that? Yeah, I got a sentence for that. So we so I got a sentence for two things. I got a sentence for Chelsea, Tottenham, and they're probably our biggest rivals, Chelsea. And I got a sentence for Brighton, and in the Brighton round, we I'll, I'll talk to you about both both the ones because obviously I've been um, I've been birded birded for them, but um, both but both the Brighton round, they, we all got it was organised on an, on an estate. We we got we got to this estate, and only seventeen of us got there, about seventeen, and called it on more but more lads were supposed to be coming, called it on. They turned up. My mate John Daniel, he's walked down here. He's like, oh, they're, he's like they're here, they're here, they're here. Come back like an excited kid. They're here. And I thought, fucking hell, like they come up the road. This was just within five five minutes of calling them because I said, look, we're at this pub, this Albion in Boozer. Um, you look coming or what? And they said, yeah, yeah, we're five minutes away, around the corner. But I've heard it so many times, like literally, I've heard Chelsea, West Ham, whatever. Everyone always says, yeah, yeah, we're we're here. And then it's like, oh, the old bill have captured us or whatever. It never happens, like, or well, it does happen, but rarely. So I thought, yeah, yeah, whatever. Fuck yeah. Next thing, they're, they're they're on top of us, and there's about 50, 60 of them. And um, come down the road and fucking my, like my mate, my mate had a pool cue. Um, Danny had a pool cue. Come down the road, flying down the road with his pool cue. 
and I had a, again I had a, a bottle another bottle as well and um, he flew into the skis with a porky the kids like put the porky down and uh and Danny's gone, all right, then put the pool cue down. And the just steamed into Danny, then picked his pool cue, picked the pool cue up and done my other mate, broke his arm with the pool cue. I said to Danny, what are you giving him the pool cue for? That was like schoolboy error. Like, don't don't give up the tool, you know what I mean? <laughs> don't ever give up the tool. But like, yeah, he, uh, my, my mate got his arm broken by the tool, but people got knocked out and that sparked out. I thought one geezer was dead, one of the bright lads was dead. Um, I fucking uh, stabbed the bright geezer in the back of the head with, with a broken bottle, done him. And uh, they ended up running after that, quite, and then they just regrouped. Uh, he, he ended up getting his head cut quite badly at the back, and uh, it's quite quite funny because uh, we went to we ended up in jail together for it. And I ended up cutting the geezer's ear and was cutting over his ear, and I was fucking in his ear. And I go, nah, fucking who get? How do you end up with that scar? <laughs> he's going, you see, you cheeky cut. I yeah, give him a haircut over over the fucking over the scar. It's a big gash. And he fucking back. thrusted you. Did yeah, that? <laughs> silly bastard. Yeah. 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 But yeah, that's fucking mad. Yeah, cut cut, cut his ear. And it's going over his scar. It's quite a big Were scar. Were you thinking, well. man, I could give him that again? No, I was just thinking, what what a day. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, what a blinder. Uh -huh. But I ended up getting nicked at the scene because we was fucking we was running we was running from the from the old bill and everyone split up in different directions and I've run into this. Um, Run up the road with my mate St uh, Stevie D, who's a blind. Like Stevie D is one of the best gods I've ever had the uh, pleasure of like being next to in a row. And like, game is fuck. Like game is you like you, you ain't moving Stevie D. And um, me and him have ended up together, and uh, we got in his taxi driver. But we just move, we was moving hot, you know. Like we'd been in a fight for ten minutes. There was blood, fucking sweat. And got into this taxi driver and they're going, drive, 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 like it was like he was some sort of fucking getaway driver out of a bank robbery. The geezer just fucking, I've seen old Bill, threw his keys out of the car and gone, help, help. And I was like, fuck, you know, yeah, we got nicked, we got put in boiler suits, they took all our clothes. And yeah, fucking, but I thought it was going to be sweet because I thought there's going to be no cameras. I thought, there's no way, like I said, we had a look, there's no cameras. And really, with that, you need to get you nailed on, you need to be either nicked right at the scene or camera evidence. Anyway, fucking about a couple of months later, my mate's gone to gone to a court case to do a West Ham, and he, on the court case evidence, they had the Brighton DVD, and I've got he's gone. There's a DVD for Brighton. I'm going, nah, surely not. I said DVD. There's no, there's no cameras. So I'm thinking, nah. So I looked like there's no cameras. Like they couldn't have been like a like, like a little eye in the sky. I thought, nah, nah, nah. They can't be like. So I, 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 I anyway, the DVD ends up coming out a geezer, literally. I, How's your luck, you fucking geezers? Professional cameraman has got a tripod. Put it on his fucking balcony and filmed the last five minutes. Zoomed in on the whole row with his tripod and give it to the old Bill. Snatch. Couldn't believe it. Yeah. Why did you get for that? Uh, well, we got we, we got about two years and the bright. I got two years something. The Brighton lads got a, a year less because they give us all a year longer because we had gone. We'd gone out of our way to go to a complete mm. game that weren't nothing to do with us and um and like fucking yeah, it's a bit. It's unfortunate though, but I couldn't believe it. The geezer give a trial for me. What's the chances? What's the chance? And you know, we picked this area because it was a moody estate. And we got told this was a little scumbag area. Go there because you'll be all right there. There's no cameras. Like, like no one will give a fuck. It's on some council estate in Brighton. They're more interested in flipping smackheads or whatever up See, there. See, that's the thing though. Everybody out with their phones and cameras. Yeah. Putting it on social media. Yeah. I didn't expect a tripod though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit... Professional bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was like HD. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, they they um they, they done us for that. And then uh, then um at the same time, I, I kind of was, was causing so much ag. I think the old bit hated me. Like they just... Wanted they, you? Yeah, they, they couldn't stand me. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, and uh, it's causing so much. I was a pro not gonna lie, I was a proper little terror. Like, mm. I was, how old were you? You got your sentence? Fucking, so I got put away twenty one, but it all come to a head when I was about nineteen. With all the cases took a little while to unfold because there's quite a few people in the case. But I got done for three cases. I got done for the George Arsenal where we smashed up one of their boozers, and I got done for um, uh, Chelsea where I got caught. Well, where they found DNA with my with a bag full of axes and hatchets and knives and baseball bats and they basically said that we were planning to seriously hurt this Chelsea mob. Which and um Did yeah. You? yeah it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, like they was uh, they was up the road and an incident had occurred years before where um a few people had been stabbed. Like and um it obviously a row has occurred and a few people have been stabbed at this route and no one like Tottenham never got run or nothing but 
this was this was uh, it was like a few a few boys got stuck because they they had turned up with all the cutlery. So they'd come up the road with all the cutlery. Tottenham, Tottenham, Tottenham stood their ground. A few people had got stabbed, and my 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 feeling behind it was that, all right, sweet. I don't think we we got done there, but people, a couple of my mates have been stabbed and they ain't been stabbed up. So even though at the end of the row it was at passing screen, at the end of the row it was one of their geezers that was lying on the floor, unconscious, pool of blood, screaming, and um, he was a he was uh, and uh, but I was like, even so. They like no like I don't I don't I think that I feel like retribution needs to be served and you know? I mean they need to start something needs to happen back because at the end of the day it's an eye an eye for an eye two for a two like, if they do that then you've got to react back to it in the same in the same manner do you know what I mean like and um, yeah so they 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 they, uh, we, they they said they was coming over we obviously everyone met up they met up in the booth up the road but they were supposed to come to a certain area they went to a different area about two miles up the road and we've all met and then, um. I remember just I remember just looking around and I was thinking that this like, that day I remember thinking yeah this 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 the, someone's gonna get properly properly done today like, and I I I wasn't in the mood for playing about that day like I just which I kind of like back in hindsight when I look back at it now I feel like thank God that it never happened. Were you willing to kill someone that yeah, day? Yeah, I, I was gonna get put away that day for if if I got nicked I would have got put away for a long time. Do you know what I mean? Like was that to rise your reputation to be involved with Tottenham or you know was, was it just you, you know, being was, violent? Do you know what it was? It wasn't even nothing to do. It's just, it's just that my mates at Tottenham, at that specific time, like I still love everyone at Tottenham. They'll always be my pals. But at that specific time, I was so engrossed in it all that like fucking, I felt like, you know, like this like this, like, this, this, this is going to happen today. This is, this is going to happen properly. Like, and I was like, you know what I mean? I, I would have done anything to like, Protect like protects Tottenham's reputation at that specific time. That's where my mind space was at that time. Now I'm in a completely different headspace. But I was like 19, 20, whatever how old it's I was. Very young. Yeah. What's it like when you get a sentence? Is the the beef put aside with firms inside prison? Well, the funny thing was, off? the funny thing was, this is the funny thing. Like, <laughs> I've ended, <laughs> I've ended up in jail. Like I just like. Chelsea, like Chelsea, are like the reason why the reason behind me hating Chelsea so much. And I like they really dislike them. I don't just dislike them, proper dislike them. Like they've done something to my old dear dislike them. Do you know what I mean? And it's the reason why it all started was because obviously they've come on the phone to me when I was about eighteen or nineteen, and they've gone. Obviously my dad's my dad's half Jewish, and my mum's Jamaican. They've come on the phone to me and they've gone like like you're you're that you're the like we was paying them. They goes you're the worst sort. And I said what do you mean when you're the worst sort? You're a, you're he goes, you're you're not just you're not just a fucking Jew. You're a fucking nigger as well. And I fucking felt the hatred from them. And I was like, yeah, these are proper, like, they're not just, your, they're, these ain't just your normal racists that you come across where the old man doesn't want his daughter of a black fella. These ain't them sort of, but these are proper, like, this is, they're like, I could feel the venom of hatred through his phone. And then I thought, yeah, do you know what? I fucking hate you as well, do you know what I mean? And um, and that's when I started really looking, they got a lot of links with Combat 18, uh, which was, I don't know if you mem remember about them, like they're like a quite far right organisation that used to, like they've done a few bombings and stuff, but they kind of gone off the grid from that since the terrorism started happening. But yeah, they, they had like strong links to them. So like they got, they're not, like, they're, they're a bit more serious than your average day, like racist, do you know what I mean? So and they, they, and they hated Tottenham because Tottenham is quite a multicultural firm. They had a few Jewish lads within the firm, but they got Muslim lads. Tottenham's a, much, a multicultural firm. You've got Turks, Greeks, Jews, fucking Jamaicans, Rust, you got Rastafarians that wear Rasta hats at Tottenham, do you know what I mean? Um, and it's just a multicultural firm and they, they, they dislike Tottenham because of that. And the maddest thing is as well, like I don't what I don't understand is Chelsea got quite a few black lads who are some of their best lads who go and I just think I just, it just it's like it's, I don't understand it. Like, because they got such a hardcore racist element, but they got these black lads who go and they're all right. Do you know what I mean? They they see them as they they're, they're all like fucking. He comes with us. He's sweet. He's not like the rest of them or whatever. Do you know that that sort of mentality? And they still go there. But um, he started building up like that. And then a couple of older lads that I had like I was uh, I looked up to a geezer called Martin Asley quite a lot at Tottenham. And um, <clears throat> he was he was like the the main older face when I was going. Who was active and uh, he despised them. Like he was from South London and his little crew were out of South London. Most of them. And they used to fucking have murders with murders with them all the time. Like there'd be so, so many different, like proper, like good, like proper rows, like the Lord Burley, the Vauxhall Bridge, flipping the Parsons Green row, all these different rows that they was having. And like, for some reason, they just like, had a personal vendetta. Like, and they just used that. And it rubs off on you. When you're hearing it week in, week out, fucking this, fucking that. It rubs it, it starts to, starts to get onto your head. And then obviously, 
I just, I, yeah, it just, it just, it just becomes like more. It just becomes a bit more like I, I didn't like. I, I dislike West Ham. I dislike Arsenal, but I hated them for some reason. Mm-hmm. I grew up in West London as well, so ran loads of Chelsea and QPR my whole life. You know what I mean? Well, when you get out of prison, what were you thinking? You just wanting straight back involved, or were you thinking this is about well, the rules getting the messy? Rules, the rules were happened straight after I got out of prison. I was on tag, so. It was like I said I wasn't gonna get involved, and and then I did, and then it's it's only took it took me to get involved with MMA to stop. I started doing the mixed martial arts to stop going. I was fortunate it's just gonna end up going going west, but I had so many bans on me and restrictions where I couldn't go places. Yeah. That like I like I was banned from most of London at one point. <laughs> uh, it's just nuts. <clears throat> like, Have any of the older school ever say look? We see obviously you've got fucking potential to do what you can do. We see you're. Yeah. yeah, the real deal, but they never say, Look, this ain't a life. Like, well, who was I, the old school? Is it Mark Carpell? Yeah, and Mark, stuff? Mark, Mark Carpell was like, he was like, he was a bit like a mentor for me, you know what I mean? He's like, a, he's a bit, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a proper legend over Spurs. He's like, I used to hear stories about Mark from like, from when I was flipping 14. I used to think, I didn't even know who he was because he was always living abroad quite a lot, but obviously he's like flipping, he's like the legend of fucking Zorro, you know what I mean? And um, he, uh, he, he when he when he come back into the country, he took me he took me down to a boxing gym with a geezer called Don Charles, who was um, Derek Tajora's coach, and started me boxing with Don Charles, which like sort of took me t- so I started taking boxing quite seriously. So obviously he took me down there, and uh, yeah, just got I got a lot of love for him, and he's um yeah, he's a, he, he's a, he's a he, he's a he's a he's a nutter though, he's proper. He's, yeah. he, uh, I used to hear stories about him flipping like fighting all the way. I don't know like how true they are, but just not just he just they used they was causing absolute murders out there. Like final was Tottenham was the first team to take the um take the well, one of the first I don't know the first team, but first one of the first teams to take it abroad to, to Europe and they went into finals end. And yeah, a few fellas were trying to not gonna say names, but trying to trying to throw people off bridges yeah, during rounds and that. The Turkish mob look Galatasaray yeah. yeah. and a batch of the are proper and the Italian mob. Yeah. Did you ever go abroad with any other firms or Yeah, I went with Tottenham once. I snuck out there when I weren't supposed to be out there. Went to Milan and got a row, but I didn't really rate them. We come down, got into their main boozer and um we was in the, we were left ten minutes before the end, got into their main pub. That was where they were where all their geezers were meant to be drinking. And um they was had all their ultras there before the game. Went there after the game, ten minutes before the end, got in there, Tottenham scored, Peter Kraut scored. Got into the boozer and we put like the Tottenham English flag on the on the window, and my mate was like um, standing at the door going, "I was winners only. You're not allowed in here." Like in, in, on their pub, there's only ten of us. We're the only English fans that were out. Everyone else was locked in the ground. They they locked all the Tottenham fans inside. And I was thinking, "Wait, this is gonna this is gonna come mad on top. This is gonna come on top." Like, and I was thinking, "But well, fuck it, it's what it's for here. <laughs> like, this is what we come for." Do you know what I'm saying? And um, there's just more and more people are coming and the, 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 the barman was like, he could tell he was one of their boys, he was not happy about us being there. And then there was, must have been a good 100 people outside now. And uh, he's gone, now it's time to go. And I looked at him, I thought, yeah, fucking bet he's fucking. Yeah. He goes, now you leave. He goes, finish your drinks. And I looked outside of my mate, um, uh, Martin as his brother, Clive. He, he, he's another, another, another game, game, game as a brother. He's, he's, um, he's bust the door. And uh, he's going outside, f- f- like a punch has been thrown, and they sort of like half backed off, and I'm just going, fuck it, I said, these cunts don't want it. Come steaming out, and um, gone straight into them, and they just all run off, and was chasing after him, like, right, they was running off up the road, and then we walked to the station, and I thought, this is going to come on top walking. I thought, they've got a regroup, but they never come. I just don't think they had, they, they, uh, they weren't the best for them. They never really had the arsehole for it. They just, you could just tell they just thought, these, these English bods are nuts, you know what I mean? But they're like, you, you, your Eastern European teams, and your German teams and whatnot, they're they're all training to fight now and that, so it's a bit of a different You got those Polish. Yeah. Fuck me, man. I think they're all trained fucking martial arts experts. Yeah, that's the thing. And do you know what I mean? And this is what this is what's happening now is like Bods are going out there to like Bods are top top them are going out to like Europe and like a couple of times if they've had they've had altercations and Everyone, do you know what? Everyone hates Tottenham. I don't know, like, <laughs> they, 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 they do. And do you know what? Because you support uh, them, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it ain't, it ain't because fucking, because of the football, because we're shit. <laughs> it ain't because of the football. So it's got to be something else, you know what I'm saying? And um, they just, like, just despise it. Like, we, we, like, everyone was jumping on this. Oh, Tottenham got a few incidents happened in Europe. People were saying, oh, Tottenham are the punch bags of Europe. I'm sitting there like I'm going. I'm banned. I'm not allowed to go to Europe. I'm sitting there going, punch bags in Europe. What are you talking about? I was like, we we was the first team to take it to Europe. I said, like we're fucking. We've been one of the probably one of the, in the top three firms in England for fucking however long. Like without a doubt. Who has the top three? <sighs> you not like saying? 
it's argued, but it's, it, everyone will have their own opinion. But I'd say, I'd say, I'd say, in the in the mix of the top five, we got the, the Zulus have got a lot of respect. Birmingham, Tottenham, uh, Aston Villa got respect. That I used to hear people speak about them years ago. People got like they got a, an element. They they do they do this, but Villa um, Zulus have got more uh, like um, Borough. I rate Borough a lot. Uh, Stoke. Yeah, I think Baz says Borough as well. Yeah, Borough got some big geezers on their phone. Like big, yeah. like, they all look like they eat flipping porridge every day for <laughs> breakfast. But they fight, yeah, they've mm. all been doing a 20 stretch. Mm. All that. But um, but yeah, Borough, um, who else? There's some good, like United will always turn up. I don't think they're, like, they're not the best firm, but they always turn up places. Uh, Everton are probably better, a lot better than Liverpool. Like, there's a few different, Millwall, have got that. Millwall, I'll tell you things in Millwall, yeah. I rate their boards, I know them personally. Everyone's always banging on about Millwall, Millwall. Millwall have got probably the most nuts. Like they, they got the best, like geezer for geezer, man for man. They got the most bods, but they don't do enough of it, from my, from my opinion. Like, Is that because they're not in the Premiership though? No, I just think it's because they got such a big reputation that no one will really meet them off the grid as much. And Is that like, right? Do people back off? Yeah, people like they got a massive reputation, haven't they? And 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 they don't. They're more of a firm that go places more banded. And I think that day and age is done. Like you got to be like, we was just, we was more of a mob. We done things like you. I'd rather let the people go somewhere 100, Tottenham go somewhere 100 and in, and 20 of us peel off and let them go with the old bill and we just slip through the net, like undetected, and just go the proper way where we're just going to get agged the whole way. What's you know? the biggest tear up you've ever had? How many people from Tottenham and another firm? Um, probably just, probably around, probably about 100 geezers in total involved in a row. Like, that's a lot though yeah have you ever punched anybody from your own firm when it's kicked off <laughs> Fuck not you, meaning that I have yeah <laughs> <laughs> I am I've, <laughs> I am I've done, to be fair I've done, I've done that to one of our one of, one of my like, one of my pals one of the little young lot and he fucking I felt bad about it I did feel bad about it after but I didn't know who he was it was a bit dark mm-hmm. and uh, but his game his, his game as a bible little young lad to go to Spurs and that but he, um, I did feel sorry for him I did actually think he was um I thought it was Chelsea, and I was, I was, I was fucking hitting. I was going, "You Chelsea, cunt!" Bang, 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 and uh, yeah, the whole time it was, I thought, "Fucking!" I thought bad about it. After I'm not gonna lie, I did, I did because, but it, we, we all we're still mates. You know what I mean? But I wish it was a Chelsea user. Yeah. <laughs> it's is that, is that, does that the score affect you after a game? Do you speak before the game or after? Um, both, whatever. Just whenever it. Yeah, but you know, see, Tot- when Tottenham used to go off a lot more, it, Tottenham used to lose all the time, and it used to be a lot more volatile over Tottenham. I used to like it better because it was like when I was younger, we'd lose and they'd be like, we'd lose like four 0 to United, and there'd be like hundred geezers out in the street just wanting it to go off, and it'd be it'd be more of a laugh. Like when and then, but it used to like when you used to win, everyone would come out a bit more jolly. But that was one more when I was before I was involved in it a bit more. Differently, do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. How did the documentary come about? The one that's been viewed millions of times. Yeah, so obviously we was um. Because you were the main character. Yeah. That, so they um, I was I was doing a MMA fight and they wanted to cover the they wanted to cover the MMA fight and um, uh, me turning me because starting to train doing MMA so they covered they covered the MMA fight and then at the fight all the boys turn up about 100, 150 of the boys turn up and coaches. And uh, someone, I don't know, someone said something to do with West Ham. It's gone off in the crowd. This is your first pro fight. Yeah. There was riots in the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seen it? yeah. It was fucking nuts. Like it you was were going... on your mate telling everybody yeah. that he calmed down. Yeah, Alex Reed was going uh, in the name of peace or something. I was like, what's this game on about? But I was, um, I was in the cage and I was thinking, I was thinking, do you know what? Like I didn't realize what it actually took to be prepared for this fight. And I was, it was about, I think it was the second round. I was fucking blown out of my ass. I was fucked. And I was thinking, yeah, do you know what? I could could have done with a break, to, to be honest with you. So, but then when it's restarted up, I'm, I'm in the mic going, stop, stop fighting, do you know what I mean? Like, just start, let, let the fight continue. The more it started continuing, the more I was thinking, I can't be bothered anymore now. It's just like almost like I had the, I was well up for the fight. And then your whole, just being in there would have just kept you persevering on through. But like then when that happened, it was like, it was like, it went on for like seven minutes. And it was like, all right, start again now. And it was like trying to pick yourself back up after you're fucking knackered. And you've, I had nothing more to give after that. Yeah. And it fucking, and then I just sort of like, but I still managed to get through the fight and win. And I, it was a good experience though, because the geezer was, um, it went the whole distance. And the geezer was a tough, tough fella and, um, uh, for Milton Keynes. At the, and uh, he, he turned up for a row. How hard is the transition from fighting in a crowd to then one in one in a ring? It's hard. Like when I first started training, I was like, um, I was, um, 
I went down to the gym and, I, and it was like fucking, I was getting bashed by like 17 year olds and I was thinking, I thought I could fight. The maddest thing is I was saying to my mate the other day, no word of a lie, yeah? I used to get into rounds, I used to drop people left, right and centre, like quickly, bang, 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 iron people. I didn't even know how to punch. I've gone to this gym, I didn't know how to twist my fist, I didn't know how to feel. I was saying to my mate the other day, I said, if I started acting out like I used to, I said it'd be devastating because um, I'll be putting people away left, right and centre, but obviously, you change, you get a bit older, and you're not. I'm not going to be running the streets mm. like what. Why does people not? If you know, if you're fighting for a farm, if you know you're going to be fighting for football matches, why do not most? Why do not most people not go out and train, do boxing or MMA? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I, I wouldn't mind getting in a forest fight. That would because mm. you can't get nicked, can you? I wouldn't mind going with about 10, 15 geezers who train fighting over here and taking on one of these Polish firms or whatever and seeing who the, who the, who the hardest is. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, like fucking, I still think British people have got that fighting spirit about them. We're all animals, yeah. Ain't they? We're all fucking. Yeah. We're, and I think obviously we're going over there. Like you've got, um, you've got to remember these Russian firms. They're going and they fight. They go to France. That Marseille thing. They're beating innocent people up. That ain't fucking. That ain't mm. hard. Do you know what I mean? That ain't hard. But like, if you come across twenty of our lot who were training and whatever, and like I, I picked a few wolves lads who are training, a couple of teams that I mates with, it'd be a different fucking ball game. Anyone can go with 50 geezers with go cams and chase a load of England shirters off. Yeah. Like, that really won't about Berlin. Yeah, that really. Yeah. And, and they do it with Tottenham and, Tottenham and other European teams like Liverpool and whoever's out in Europe. What they do is they pick up, they, 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 they go there like two, two nights before, whatever, like a lot of fans go there and they'll pick bars, but they'll wait till one in the morning people are coming out plastered. They've done it in Lazio. Like, my mates were in a bar in Lazio and they, they tapped the pub and um, my mates ended up fucking having it with them on the side street. When my actual pals come out to fucking have it with them, they fucking, they didn't want to know and they chipped off. They fucked off. Yeah, I've seen it. Amsterdam yeah. fans are bad for it as well. Yeah. Getting into fans' yeah. pubs and just beating people up. Yeah, and it's like, but when, when like, they, they Ajax, well, but, 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 but the Lazio come 50 on handed and stabbed a load of shirts outside and fucking attacked a pop bar that had woman, like there was July the 4th and it was, uh, what's it called? Uh, the American Independence Day. They attacked a bar, a load of student birds in it and my pals. And like, when the geese actually, when they got actually confronted with a row, they they flapped it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So how yeah. did you make? What, what was the plans of stopping from fighting for Tottenham to then going pro, going pro in MMA? Yeah, so I got nicked. Um, got done for all of that football violence, and then um, I just I just I just kept finding that violence was constantly becoming a problem. Do you know what I'm saying? And um, I just kept. I I I, I think the, at the point I think I got nicked for I got nicked for attempted murder. And I think that was the point where I was like, look, I've got to start fucking doing something else because I just, I didn't do the attempted murder. <laughs> I never do. Yeah, no, nah, I didn't. Nah, I, 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 I didn't. What had happened was this, I had a problem with this geezer and um, I got roped in on this, um, on this charge. Nothing, it was nothing to do with me, but me and this geezer had an altercation of just pure reputation. And this is why I thought, decided I need to start making a change here. But through pure reputation, I've got nicked for it because it's like the area that I was living in, it's a small town. No one really does that sort of thing up there. Um, and uh, this geezer's been this geezer who was uh, used to go around robbing people. He uh, he's ended up getting st stabbed up. And I remember I didn't like me and this fella didn't like each other. I knew he was a rat. The geezer didn't like him, never liked him. Um, thought he was a wrong one. And my judgment was normally pretty good with characters like that. And uh, so I'm in. I'm 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 asleep. I'm in, I'm in bed and I get this phone call and someone's going, oh, "What have you done? What have you done?" He goes, oh, come, "What are you talking about? I'm in bed." And he goes, oh, so-and-so has been stabbed. I said, listen, I said, I'm in bed. I said, it wasn't me. But I said, if no one's claiming it, I said, I'll have it. <laughs> I said, I'll have it on the CV. <laughs> I was only joking, like in jest. Anyway, if I didn't think nothing of it. And um, I'm fucking, dri I'm driving along to a club in Watford. And I'm driving to this club. I've got a few quid on me. Driving along uh, with my pal. And um, coming through Watford. But Watford's A&PR camera up. It's to the eyeballs. It's like fucking, you walk, walk in, they drive through there. Then they pick up your registration plate on the cameras and they just swamped on my motor like, stay where you are, fuck, old people everywhere, bang, bang, bang. I was thinking, what the fuck's going on here? And um, the like, hands on the fucking steering wheel, it was like fucking, uh, took me, took my motor, took me to the police station. They was like, right, you're getting nicked for, um, at the time it was like, um, they thought the geezer was dying, he kept coming, died about five times. They kept having to bring him back to life. And uh, they, that dummy for attempted murder at the time, I think it was, or it might have been, I can't remember what the charge was, they, they was telling me that I was on nicked me and they kept coming to the flap going he's died again and they've just revived him they goes you're looking like you're fucked and i'm sitting there thinking i didn't do it i was going like I was going, what you want about I said i was i weren't there so they was going like fucking anyway pull, pull me in for an interview about 
23 and a half hours into being there and I'm sweating thinking, do you know, like, I'm going to get fucked here. I thought literally, not that chance possible. And I thought there's geezers who were in jail who were like, I never did it. And like, fuck it, one I'm going to be one of them. I was thinking, fucking hell, I thought, what I could do about this. I thought, do you know what? I wouldn't mind if I'd done it. I said, I'll just hold my hands up and I'll do my bit of time. But I didn't even do this. I was thinking, this is going to be, you know, like when you watch some hurricane, whatever, the geezer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm Denzel thinking, I'm going to be that geezer. Like, I'm going, it worked me, it worked me. And I'm thinking, fuck. But the worst thing was as well, my phone cell sighted me to that area. Because where, uh, where I was, was, ne was nearby, where I was asleep. And so I, I was cell sighted to that area. So I couldn't even say cell sight my phone. And the cell sight of me being in that location enough would have been enough to fucking fuck me. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, luckily there was a witness. So the witness must have come forward. The geezer that he, or whoever he was with has witnessed saying that it was an, uh, another fella, a, a fella out from, from, from Luton. And um, anyway, fucking, they ended up letting me go. But as they let me out, the old bill had gone to me, oh, look, you've, you've got a threat against your life warning, like an Osman warning, I think that's what they call it. Um, and they was like, look, people think it was you that have tried to do this geezer still and, it, and, it, and it's on your life sort of thing. And I'm there and I'm like thinking, all right, and like, so? And they're going, uh, they, they said to me, um, some biker gang, the dad's linked to some biker gang. And I thought to myself, these geezers, these geezers are fucking rat. I thought fucking, there's no way he's gonna be connected to some fucking high up biker gang. I said like, and I said like, and there's no way they're gonna come for this geezer after he's, he's, he's after what he's, he's, what he's doing, do you know what I mean? Like, any sensible bod wouldn't touch the fella with an iron, bars, iron bars pole. Anyway, they're going, I was sat and I thought, you being serious? I said to the kids, you've been watching too much fucking Sons of Anarchy. So I said to the cop, I said, you need to stop, you need to fucking pause season six and drop it out. <laughs> like fucking, he's literally been fucking watching Jack Teller. Anyway, um, I said, I just laughed him off. They go, yeah, you need to tell us where you're, where you're staying because we know you're not staying at the address so we can make sure that you're safe. I said, look, I think I fancy my chances on my own. I said, you should never help me before. I said, you'll never help me in the future. And I sort of said, sweet, but thanks for the thanks for the warning. And I goes, one more thing, don't be thinking about getting your um, Labrick Grove mob down here or fucking going to do anything in retaliation or whatever because like it's, it'd be on you, do you know what I mean? So I said, oh, thanks. So, you know what I mean? Left and, and that was the end of that. But I thought fucking, what a fucking cunt living in fairyland telling me that I've got some fucking bike again. He was basically implying that people were going to come from abroad and stuff. I just thought, How old were you then? Uh, I was about 24, 25. But I was like, um, at that point, I was like, I was thinking, do you know what? Like, I need to, need to slow down because I'm getting pulled in for things that I'm not even doing now, just through out of reputation. And that could have gone westward. And I thought, do you know, I've got to kind of like make a curb here and just stop. Like, because that all come about through me having a problem with it with this fella. I just thought it could just, something like that could end up yeah. be, be, becoming a bit more serious. But it was like, honestly, it was one of the moments when I was in there and they kept coming to the flap. I thought, if this geezer dies and there's no witnesses and I'm cell sighted, like I could be fucked here. And it, it would generally wasn't me, but the, the said fella who, who, who got stabbed, he, um, he tried to rob, rob a fella and he's ended up, the robbery has gone wrong. He's got, he's got done and um, he's ended up picking the geezer out in the ID parade who stabbed him. And I sat there and I thought, mate, I, do you know what? This is the problem with the criminal underworld in, now. I don't know if, you, I'm not saying it wasn't like this back in the day, but there's bods who are doing bits and pieces who are fucking like going out robbing people who are being, doing proper scumbag behavior. And because they're working with the old bill, they don't get nicked. And I just, I, I just don't understand it, do you know what I mean? I just, like, I just can't, I can't get my nut around this, how this geezer's gone to rob someone, got stabbed up and picked the geezer out in an ID parade. That right. makes no sense. And this is the sort of people that you're dealing with out there. Like these are the sort of bods that are like, I know people are running about doing their utmost and they don't get touched by the old bill. And I just think to myself, they got a license to do whatever they Question want. Question marks over their head. They got a license to do what they want. And the proper people like are getting done and getting put away and fucked, you know what I mean? Because yeah. they don't work with, with, with the other mob. Do you know I say mean? there's more informants now than there's actually screws. Uh, do you know what I mean? I don't think that the old bill actually do that much of a good job. I think they just, they just simply work on, on, on people being it's just their intelligence from grasses, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what most of it is. It's not through like old fashioned policing, people are getting done, they're just getting a drop from someone. Do you know what I mean? Someone yeah. gets pulled in, they can't handle their bit of porridge. How hard was it for you to start making changes, especially enjoying violence and being it's, involved in the mix? It's difficult, and it's always that I, I, I find as well, there's always, what, there's, there's always a dicker that will pop up every six months. I call it the six month annual uh, break, it's like a six month holiday. So when people go to Goa, they go to Goa for six months and then the whatever the rain starts. So it's the same on the street. Every six months there's a new dickhead that, that comes up. 
a new dickhead just trying to make a name for himself. Or, try and test you. Yeah, try and pop up. But how hard is that then? Because the documentary obviously was watched millions of times. Yeah. Does that obviously enhance your reputation, but does it also make you a target? Yeah, it makes you a target. But you know, it is. It's like I'm just you just got to just keep fit and just I know I can handle, I know I can look after myself. You know what I mean, and it, it's, it is what it is, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Do you think training for MMA has calmed you down? Train, yeah, definitely. So like, I, I look at things completely differently. Like, so like now, I think like situations. I'd think, oh, I need to. I want. I'm gonna do that geezer or whatever. Or now, I just think to myself, I know what I can do. I'll go out now, and I might. Someone, you know, like you'll be out. And someone will be nutting, nutting me, like looking at me, looking at me. And I think, what's what's, what's this kind of looking at? Do you know what I mean? And norm, like before, I would have just fucking confronted the situation, or it would have gone off or whatever. Now I just think to myself, like, look, mate, like, I know, I know. If worst case, what will happen if it goes off? What I, what I can do? So, just I ain't really got. I don't feel like I've got nothing to prove anymore. Do you know what I mean? To, to my, I, I, well, I, if you if I look into it deeply, I think this might be something to prove to yourself. I've got nothing to prove to myself now. Like I know what I'm capable of. Like before, I was like trying to prove ways to myself. Yeah, I'm. Like, I'm. A, you're a tough guy. Like you can do this. You do that. Now I. Just, now I know. Like I know what, what. I know what I can do. Like I don't need to prove anything to myself or to anyone. Like I don't feel like I need to do anything now to to enhance. Like you say, enhance reputations or anything. Like it is what it is. And it's only like if, if I'm out and it comes on me, then you got to do what you got to yeah. do to protect yourself. But it's like the MMA kind of kind of like it humbles you a lot. I think. I think that's the breakdown of getting beaten up. By like kids when you first start, it humbles you and it makes you feel like no longer like it breaks you down as a man. Do you know what I mean? Getting beaten up, training, sparring, and think you know you're not you're not like you're not as tough as what you thought you was. Like then starts to make you think differently, mm -hmm. and then like as as your journey goes on, you start to think differently as a martial artist, and you start to think I don't need to prove myself to him. Like it is like oh, and and you calm down a lot more. Do you know what I mean? Like obviously you're a lot more dangerous, but you don't feel the need to. You don't need to feel the need to use that yeah. violence anymore, if that makes sense. Yeah, because we were speaking about that earlier, that the baddest motherfuckers in the gym that are the yeah. quietest. There's yeah. nothing to prove. Yeah. You tend to see if you're in a football firm that everybody's loud and boyish yeah. because there's 30, 40 handed. Yeah. Put them in a ring themselves and then you'll see the yeah. true colours, you'll see who's tough. Yeah, that's what I mean. And like fucking, that, that's what I mean. And like, like the, the, the gym can't, the gym as well, it kind of breaks down. It actually makes you think like, 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 right, like you know, or do you do things too? make yourself tough like you'd make yourself into a tough man doing things like fights and whatever and you get a tough reputation in that gym when you get into that gym it breaks you down and you realise oh fuck it right you're not that tough and then you actually become tough and then when you actually become really tough within yourself and you know like you're, mm -hmm. you're an actual animal then you then, it, then that's when you find peace I think yeah, I'm 100%. Like yeah. the ones who are always shouting about they're going to batter people and this and that is the yeah. ones who end up getting battered Yeah, the ones yeah. who are constantly shouting out shit like the loudest men as as the weakest. Yeah. I believe I always say it, but yeah. fair play to you for making the changes. You're also in a documentary is it Elba Edris Elba? Edris Elba. Yeah. Elba. Yeah. How did that come about? It was a phenomenal yeah. actor, him. Yeah, because I was doing bits for the prince. I was doing like an I was like an ambassador for the Princess Trust. I was doing like bits and pieces to try and I went through a little stage when I was younger where I was trying to. Um, I was going to football, but I'd stop being involved in like on the on the stop being on stop being on road like round the manor. So I was going through a little stage where like I. I kind of like uh, was going for a transformation, but not in every aspect of my life, just on the on the on the street side. Do you know what I mean? So then I was trying to stop young kids getting involved in knife crime and gang crime and whatever around around the manor. So then obviously got involved with Princess Trust, done a little documentary. With Idris, he's actually an alright guy. So yeah. at the time, do you know what? I didn't really know who he was too tough. He wasn't as big an actor as he was now. He'd done some films. He'd done like The Wire. And it was only after that I'd gone away and watched The Wire and I was like, fuck, you know, and then he'd be coming like he was in Nelson Mandela and a few other Phenomenal films. Actor. And I was like, right, this Yeah, but I was probably lucky because I probably would have been a bit starstruck. Yeah. But I still like, do you know what I mean? I managed to remain a bit, it was on a sensible level, but mm -hmm. it, was, it, it was good though, do you know Yeah, I mean? it was good that I watched that last night, man. Yeah. It's a um, phenomenal actor and it's yeah. good. You've done a lot of stuff. Do you think that your mum has a big part to play in that though? Yeah, do you know what? I told you, my mum has a big part to play in the sense that like, I like, come from an area where a lot, there's a lot of things going on a lot of violence and a lot of people who, I don't know, who haven't got a lot of morals are doing things and stuff. And there's a lot of, my mum sort of, even though I was involved in a lot of violence, she's a proper, she does a lot of work with people to like feed in the poor around, around that area after the Grenfell Tower tragedy, tragedy. But she's a proper clean eye person. You know what I mean? Lovely, lovely, lovely woman and that. And um, I think she's installed that into me. Even though I've done a lot of violence, I've been involved in a lot of violence, I'm still a good, clean-hearted person. Like, I wouldn't see no one do anything wrong or bully someone or or or, or, or rob, rob a woman or something. Do you know what I mean? And I think all these, like, 
people can get lost on that. Sometimes think, oh, about especially about me thinking, oh, he's he's this, he's that. But if you deep it properly, like I'm actually, if you know me on a personal level, like a lot of people who've got bad words to say about me don't know me from Adam. If you actually meet me as a person, I'll, I'll, I'll just, my friends, my family, people around me, I'll do the utmost to help them. And I, and I think obviously that comes from her, like, you know, like I've got a, got a good side as well as a bad side. Everybody has. Yeah, do you Everybody know what I mean? Has. Like, and I try to try to only bring that bad side out when it's absolutely necessary or at football. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, and I think that's like that, that. That sometimes that can be lost. Sometimes you know, like people will have a, have a bad, bad, bad word to say about this. Generally, with me, it's it's if they have they haven't actually even had a conversation with me. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. How has it been four and all in the professional MMA? How far do you think you can go? Do you know what? For me, yeah, like I don't know, like I, I well, I've done a bit of bird and I lost a bit of time, but I really want, like I, my my boy, I'm trying to get him into martial arts now. I really just want to win at least a UK title so I can have something called the mantelpiece for the boy, do you know what I mean? So he's got something to look up to, do you know what I mean? But if it can go a little bit further, then that'd be blinding. But I lost a little bit of time being away for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. But like I say, the heavyweight division is quite weak, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? And it's like, it's a puncher's chance. Everyone's got a puncher's chance. How is it with fights now? With people coming to watch, is everything calmer? I told him, yeah. I, I, I said to a few people, look, if you start again, like you're gonna... Because sh- a few shows didn't want to book me on. And I was like, look, come on. I said, like, I had to add a word with him, like, come on, boys, you can't be doing that, do you know what I'm saying? Because I'm trying to do something, do something here, do you know what I'm saying? But um, it's, um, it is, a, they haven't started any trouble since. I don't think they will. Touch wood. Touch, yeah. yeah. Touch wood. Yeah. <laughs> but, but in saying that, I've been fighting, I haven't, I need, I need to have a fight in London, because to be fair, I've been fighting a lot in, I had a last two fights I've been in Swindon. And like, if I have one in London, it will just rock, it will just be rocking. Mm. Like, I can't wait, do you know what I mean? Do no. you miss the old days? Yeah, I do. Yeah, like I, I, I do miss. I, do you know what it is? I miss being a bit carefree when I was younger. I miss that carefree feeling. I miss you know what I mean. But Selfishness, then, not giving a fuck. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. But now it's like different, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? But and as well, like I come back off my ban after thirteen years, and um, I was uh, I, I, this was just before COVID started. In November, come back off my ban, and mate, it's like the old Bill had there onto me. I thought to myself, like, you wasn't even onto me like this when I was active. They got, they, they been, they was man marking me, like Chelsea, West, uh, West Ham, Chelsea, Chelsea at home, they, they man marked me. They put like two old Bill on me. And um, it was, it was funny because it was um, a funny story. They, um, they, they put these two old Bill on me, but these, like these young, young coppers and um they were outside, they're following me about, and I'm thinking, fuck, you just leave me alone. It's like I'm going to one pub, they're following, going to another one, just thinking, just drop it out. It's, it's, it almost starts to, it, it, like, antagonise you. And but like, I'll go into a calf, they sit outside the calf, like, fucking taking notes, like, you're, you're eating baked beans or something. They're writing down, Don they all is, is eating baked beans, you know, like, and I think, fuck, it's a list. We walked up to this pub, and um, gone to this pub called the uh, Beehive, I mean, it's Boozer, and um, they're outside the pub. And like they're watching in the pub, and I'm thinking, you know, I, I, I've had enough of this. And not even that I wanted to cause any ag. I just thought I just want to just go have a drink without being watched and followed. But obviously, it comes with obviously being on that documentary probably wasn't the best thing that you could have done. But I was at the, at the Pacific time. I was looking at it like I weren't going to be going back to football. I'd had a 13 year ban. I didn't want to get nicked again. But obviously, come out off my ban and I want to go and watch Spurs because I'm um, it's. It's my first like proper love. I love Spurs. Like they're like it's like I'm like like how you get Muslim fanatics. I'm a fanatic for Spurs. You know what I mean? And um, I thought to myself, right, I want to I want to still want to watch Spurs. So gone started going. So at this at this pub, and they're outside. I thought, right, we're gonna lose these. I thought, yeah, today we're gonna slip these now. We're gonna go and watch the game. No old Bill. And uh, I was with my pal, and we pretended to hop over into the garden, and um, they've not sort of looked and they've gone, ah, oh, yeah, we're, we're watching ya. So I thought, oh, the garden route's not going to work. But it was just a little dummy. So then we've gone, I knew they had a side door for the pub. So we come through the main door. Now they're watching the garden door and the main door, but there's another side door at the pub. So we slipped out of the side door and um, gone up the road, fucking gone to another pub or whatever. So completely lost them. And um, they apparently come into the pub about half hour later, going like, where's he gone? Like they didn't even know there was a side door. <laughs> they're going, where's he gone? They're looking around the pub, going fuming, like foam coming out of their eyes. I've gone up to, walked up the road and we got, we got pulled up the road about an hour later. And it was by like the senior old Tottenham old Bill, like the ones who have been going since I was a kid. And I've said, um, uh, he's pulled me up and I said, look, I said, 
I said, come on, boys. I said, show, show, show a bit more respect. I said, don't put the kids on me. At least put the seniors. I said, like, it's me with Dino. You know what I mean? I said, like, you can't put the amateurs on. Do you know what I mean? Because we just completely slipped on it. It's funny. It's funny. They, I think they see it as a, as a funny. I was only having a laugh of them in jest, but it was like they literally... How hard was that, though, going to a game, trying to change your life? Did the old thoughts come back that I could go a tear up today? Um... Yeah, nah, nah, nah. Don't bother me watching this thing because you're lying, bastard. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> nah, I just got like literally, I'm, I'm, um, yeah, I'm not, it's, 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 it's a done game now, isn't it, really? Do you know what I mean? Especially if you're pro now as well. Yeah. Lose your license, lose everything. Yeah. Do you know what? The thing is, I'm, I'm kind of glad that maybe coronavirus had, had, had happened because it was like, I was going to all the games and that, and probably a. I don't know, it's probably a good thing, you know what I mean, that, that it happened because it's given me a time to come a bit away and a bit of reflect because at the end of the day, I know what I know what the old bill are like. And I know that, for example, if I was going to a game with my boy, for example, and I know probably you get a few scumbag teams that would take my boy to a game, someone's try a company or something from behind. It's probably, they probably might try because you get a few, and the old bill see it on camera, they'd probably nick me, try and send me to prison for it because they don't like me. Mm -hmm. So... Like um, uh, there was an incident where where it went off with Sheffield United, Sheffield United, and the, my first game back off a ban, and um, I didn't even do nothing, mate. I was outside the boozer. Someone pushed someone. It's gone off. <clears throat> There's loads of shouting and tuning and for a few. Loads of people got decked and that, and um, didn't I didn't throw a punch. Didn't get involved. And um, my mate got my mate got nicked for it. He got set on top because he pushed the fellow at the start, and it was just literally, I didn't touch it. And um, all the police reports about me. It doesn't say about me to do anything with me throwing any punches but I thought to myself right these lot really they really got it in for me you know what I mean like I've, I've not there's an incident here the geezer's been nicked he's in, he's on trial I'm not on trial and my name is on it more than he is so I, that, that, I started, when I've looked back at that paperwork I was thinking do you know what like these these lot these are proper, proper going for it but I, I, I don't understand why they got such a needle about football because it's like there's so much other crimes that are going on that are so much more bigger. A couple of people throwing a few punches is a minor thing. Like there's things that are going on, serious things out there that like kind of like get sw not not sweat on the car, but they get they don't they don't get as much police attention and they don't get as much porridge. Yeah. And I just think to myself like it's like you, 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 they I don't know they just you, pe people have got families lives, and I, I think they're just like they're looking at that thing man. Well, I didn't do, I didn't do a thing, and they got my name all over the port. They could be taking me away from my family when I'm not doing anything. That's a serious thing to do, and I just I don't understand why why they do. Why is they it like still that. as big from now present day football violence to ten as it was ten twenty years ago? No, nah, it's not really. No, nah, quite down. Yeah, it's quite down. Cameras and shit. Quite, yeah, yeah, it's quite down. It's, mm. it's it's all different now, isn't it? It's all different. Obviously, there's still elements, but it's a lot different now. It's like it's a lot more. It used, it used to be like fucking when I was a kid, and that it used to be going off every week. But I think as well, like there's a few other things as well, like to do with football as well. I don't know if you saw. The um that uh, the Black Lives Matter yeah. incident that happened with football bods and that and it kind of went off between the black community and and football because there was a mark like the statues were getting disturbed and that up um up by the by the um uh, left like uh, uh, Black Lives Matter and, and um I think that Black Lives Matter had a lot of Antifa who were a left wing organisation like um within there within with, 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 uh, infiltrated within them do you know what I mean because um. You was going and like, oh, you were seeing like sort of BLM getting written on graffiti, but then it was like some white student that was doing it. Like a lot of that's like not even sort of like black people doing it. I mean, that's more like uh, Antifa, which is a left wing yeah. organization infiltrating that, that, that group. And there was a lot of tension being sparked up between that and the football community. And um, it's quite, it's, it's, it's quite upsetting. Cause I'm just like, do you know like, a lot of the black community now probably look at football hooligans and just like they're just all, all, all under the tar and under the same brush like they're all racist scumbags and they don't understand that there's a lot of football bods a lot of football firms who are multicultural who ain't like that and a lot of football lads are looking at Black Lives Matter with and the black that, that Black Lives Matter movement and thinking that they dislike that they, they, there's a dislike of them now because there's like a, a, a rivalry between them but like I said before there's a lot more that goes into into it and people see like not everyone at football is a is a racist or 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 or, or fucking anti, anti Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. and not 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 and what Black Lives Matter as well. What what people at football don't understand is that they there's a lot of um, there's, they, there's a lot more to that to that movement than what they what they understand. Like coming from a, a, like from the black community, we, where like 
the football community automatically think that everyone was going out upset because of some American guy, the George Geezer, got killed in America. I don't know, remember when they all sparked up? Yeah, and he put his knee in the throat. Yeah, like a lot of people, like a lot of people at football are thinking, oh, like, because I hear this argument all the time. Why, why, um, why are people marching to do a uh, black guy that's in America about? Uh, who's been killed out there over here what's it got to do with us over there but it, what they don't understand is it's not really about it's not about that what it's about is is, is about fucking the black community in, in England being persecuted by the old bill and by by, 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 by the old bill over here for years it's been going on it hasn't just gone away not to say that white people haven't been persecuted by the old bill or white communities haven't been targeted by the old bill but it's, it's when you grow up in an area like Labrick Grove it's constant mm-hmm. do you know what I mean there's a lot of constant stop and searches a lot of nickings uh, people getting killed in police stations. Like my 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 um my uh, my sister's fiance got murdered in Nottingham police station by the old bill, and um, nothing nothing happened. Like no, no no one went to the streets for it. Um, but these things build up, and the community starts to build up, and this like a trickle, a, a a a number of events happen. Like my my sister's fiance getting killed, Mark Duggan getting killed by the old bill in Tottenham. All these incidences start to build up people's sons get taken beatings by the old bill and they start to build up and people don't necessarily might not march at that specific event but then it takes something in america to spark off all these feelings that have been going on for that years do you know what i mean and then i suppose people will sit there and think oh they're silly going and marching for some geezer in america and they 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 say oh he's a criminal or whatever or did a why they marching for him but they're not looking at they're not in it they're not seeing what's going on week in week out like they're not stayed like I, I, I've like I've been there personally. I've seen my sister br- break down in her tears in a hospital whilst armed police are there. Do you know what I mean? Like and these things, and then my house got spun the next day by the old bill in the morning. Like after they've just ironed out, like a, basically a member of our family, they they raided the house. And then when I was walking down the street, they've gone to me, "You're going to be next." Like these sort of things. Like they don't people ain't seeing that, and this is what's going on in that community and the build up of the build up of mistrust and, and hate then it erupts from something that's happened in America. Yeah. How was it with uh, Grenfell just behind us here? How's that been for the community here? I was, do you know what? I was away when that, I was away when that happened, but um, um, I was in jail, but my brother, he he, he went down there and like, obviously you see people like burning at their windows and stuff like, and he, like was traumatised by it for a long time. Do you know what I mean? um, I had uh, got some good mates called the Disson brothers. Harry Alfie and Charlie, they're 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 old, they're old, they're old man. They was off my estate, and um, their old man died died in the town. So a lot of good friends, families, and that were linked. And I had a boy that I used to play football with that, that that went back in to save his family. He didn't come back out. So a lot of people have had people that, who, who, who have died in there. And like, there's a massive mistrust for the government because of because of Grenfell Tower. And they just, I think, a lot of people around around the manor and that they just feel like this area, like our, particularly our area, that they don't want they don't want working class people around there. And they don't want the working class community around there because it's an affluent area. It's the Queen's Borough. There's a lot of money. They're pumping a lot of money and they're trying to knock, knock down all the council estates and turn them into private residents. And everyone feels like they're looking at us like we're a hindrance and they want to move, move everyone out uh, systematically in whatever system that they're doing. And they just feel like they, a lot of the block, tower blocks have been abandoned and they're, left, they're like sort of left Communities are left to to rot. So they so when they do get offered a chance to move out, they take it straight away. Oh, we're knocking this building down now because it's been left for so long. Yeah. Has there been any answers for that yet? As the people still no, fighting? no, there's been no justice That's for it at terrible, all. Man. Like no justice for it at all. And this is what I mean. Like it's all it's all sort of swept under the carpet, and um, as if it's going to be forgotten about. Yeah, and there's been a lot of marches. Yeah. Walk out at a good few yeah. times. There's been a lot of marches for it and stuff. It's I mean, it's disgusting. Do you know what I mean? But then. This, oh, they had, they had, that's what makes people angry though yeah do you know what I mean that's what people think well, fuck and the whole system's just a bit corrupt yeah. I mean I mean, I mean, I, I, I think the whole system's corrupt anyway I used to be quite patriotic about my country and that. now I just sort of, after all the things that I've seen and uh, things that have gone on I just think to myself well, like, what's, like, what's going on like even pr- even prison you know like you go to prison and I think to myself I'm in jail and that and I think right I'm like I'm, I'm just, I was a young like how old I was I think I could probably half the prison population by one move how has this not been done I would look at, when I was looking in prison I was thinking all they need to do is put in major firms into prisons like I don't know like for example Mercedes Benz and 
fucking different sort of like car manufacturers and uh, building like builders firms or whatever they could have everyone uh, they could make contract out the work in, in inside prisons give them an actual occupation to do an actual skill to learn like skill trade like making aeroplanes or something you know like something that something ab- like they, they would get paid a decent wage so that they could actually survive when they get out do the do the course to, to do to, to get the job do the job have the have the contracts inside the prison and then have a follow-on job when they get out I said you probably half the prison population in one hit by doing that in yeah. every prison across the country. But prisons but make money. Prisons don't make they? money. Yeah. They want people in prison. Yeah. So so it's not 40, 50 grand on inmate. Yeah. yeah. So so they want they want they want an increase of inmates. So they yeah. actually don't like they want to increase the prison population because it makes dough. It puts judges in, puts whole bill in, it puts flipping uh, prison officers, governors. Yeah. So they so it makes no sense putting someone in prison, locking them in a box for, for twenty three hours a day, and then letting them out at forty quid. But and then you commit more crime. It's a constant circle. Yeah, who's more, who's deciding yeah. to do this? Yeah, it's Who, fucked up. Everything that, I believe is flawed, even from the schooling system. Yeah. There's just so much shit that is backwards to me. But mm. I've not got the power. Obviously, I just need to look yeah. after me and my and family. You, exactly. And if you speak out too much, I'll probably get persecuted. For speaking <laughs> out too much, probably yeah. have. Yeah, probably, yeah. You know, what I mean, if you speak out too much, you either go missing or you end up. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Men in black. But, but, like, this, but there's so much more you can speak to about. That you could evolve this conversation in a million different yeah, ways. Yeah. But like, if you speak too much, then do you know what I mean? Yeah, you become a threat. Like, if you're yeah. stopping people's money, same with fam- pharmaceutical yeah. industries, there's yeah. just so much. Going forward for the future, brother, what's yeah. the plans for you? Uh, basically, from the future, I've got to set up a, an American uh, a firm selling American bully XLs. So I've really got that up and up on the ground. Trojan uh, Trojan bully um, UK, U, uh, Trojan bully UK is it? Um, Where can people Kenos. check all your social on media and stuff? On Instagram, so you could just put type my name on Instagram and then the link for my, uh, for my for my Trojan bully page mm-hmm. where they sold the bullies is on there, and um, the Instagram's probably the main place that they can check check that out. Another fight this year? Yeah, I'm going to be fighting for a title and just trying to find an opponent because my opponent that I was going to have is uh, signing for a major organisation. So I've got a title fight coming up, so keep your eyes on that. You can yes. follow that on my Instagram mm-hmm. as well. I'll have all like training videos and that, and um, yeah, hopefully. We yeah. Can, Listen, brother, for coming on today and telling your story, Sweet. it's been fascinating. Nice I thoroughly enjoyed Sorry. it, mate. And, Christy, uh, mate. All the best for the future. I can't wait to see your next fight. Me too. Yeah, Me too. perfect, nice one. brother. Cheers. Check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.